Hello, North America. Welcome to the Overwatch Open. Second segment, second day of our third week, and we've got a lot to look forward to. We've already got two people locked into those playoff spots. To say people, I do, of course, mean teams. Groups of six that have managed to battle their way to the grand finals and find victory. Now we're into our third week. It is of four. And you've got a lot to look forward to at this point in time because North America is equal, if not more competitive than we've seen over in Europe. We had a spectacular semi-final. In fact, two of them. Previously, however, no series going the whole way. We got to see a 3-0 best of five grand final, two two zeros. Maybe North America can break that curse. And two people to guide you through the North American action are beside me. I've got myself, Ask Joshi, how you doing, man? What's your favorite hero? You can only play one for the rest of your life. You told me once, I want you to say it again. It's Farah, but, you know, she's been on hard times Hey, recently. man, you got to cast some Farahs the other day, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, actually, yeah. Farah actually came out uh, earlier today or no it was yesterday yesterday yeah <laughs> Farrah like, versus Farrah. So it does and, blur into one. and i was like who are these characters flying around i don't get it <laughs> I don't, i've never seen that before john favorite hero t what are you saying if i had to pick one it'd be lucia lucia okay so you got the, you got the wall ride skills did you see a video recently on reddit it was so cool he was oh. on Ilios and he was like, just basically had this sweet, Constantly. swift movement. It was so, so sexy. Is that is that where you're at right now? I, I don't pretend to be doing that every time Ilios okay. loads up, but I do have the appreciation. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, we've got Lucio main and we've got a fire main over here. And you guys do be sure to continuously get involved. What is your main? What are you playing most? And we'll start that discussion in Twitch chat as well. But if you're on Twitter, hashtag OWOpen is where that discussion will take place. And if you want to go ahead and understand what on earth is this weird man talking about, overwatchopen.com is the website you should be checking out. That's got all the information. I keep talking and throwing these words, but if you want to understand at your own pace, overwatchopen.com is where you should go. For now, though, let's understand this format. I've been explaining it time and time again. However, it is easy to digest, it's easy to understand, and easy to comprehend. It's open brackets, so anybody can compete, and that's the kind of the beauty of it. I'm a big sucker for this just because it does mean that, you know, this is where you can find those diamonds in the rough, those players that have just kind of snuck under everyone's radar. If you've been playing and you think you've got the skills to pay the bills, like Josh on his Farrah or John on his Lucio, if you think you're up to it, pull together a ragtag crew and you very well could be here on the broadcast next week. This is how it does break down a little later on, though. If you do find success, you'll be battling through the group stage, looking to get that grand final prize of the E-League Arena. It's over in Atlanta, $300,000 on the line. I keep talking about playoffs. That's what you're seeing on your screens now. That's where they're going to be trying to get to. Doesn't necessarily guarantee the trip to Atlanta just yet. And this is where we're at so far. I said third week. You can see on the left, the already qualified teams are the, win the winners of the grand finals. We saw Envious and Cloud9 lock those in to figurehead North American organizations already thriving despite Envious being primarily European. I'm always going to remind everyone about that. And in terms of points, you have NRG, TSM, and Sodipop alongside the rest at the top of that one. Those points, of course, letting the other teams qualify for the playoffs. Let's have a quick look at the schedule, though. This is where we're at for North America. We have three games to look forward to. Two best of threes and a best of five. You get TSM Liquid to start things off. A rematch of last week. We'll be telling you more about that in just a moment. Following that, you get Fnatic NRG. NRG, of course, are the ones that do have the Luminosity or ex-Luminosity roster. It's going to be intriguing to see them flying under a new flag, making the progress necessary to be seen here on our second day. This is the semis by now, and of course that does mean a whole lot of points already and in their pockets. They are going to want, though, that guaranteed playoff spot. And now we do turn our attention immediately to what is going to be our first game. And I did touch on it already. I would like you to set the scene once again, Josh, because I do... I do like what happened last week. I'm, I, I'm British. Something about the underdog finding success is just like, it just gives us tingles. John, you can you can agree with me. I want to see some yeah, nods. Yeah, definitely. We are suckers for an underdog in England. Maybe because we are, we well, have been one <laughs> for a long long time and the history of our, uh, our world. But I do want you to talk to me a little bit about the Liquid story. Okay, so last week we mentioned uh, team, you mentioned this is going to be a rematch, Team Solo Mid versus Team Liquid. Last week we were saying that Team Liquid may have been the underdogs because Team Solo Mid was performing so well. Yeah. And last week, uh, you know, Harblue and Nicholas and Torque just couldn't make it happen. Team Liquid were actually trying out a player named Kefri to replace Dummy, who went over to NRG. Dummy uh, did play with NRG and is going to be back here again in our second semifinal. But Kefri really actually impressed us re with his Reaper play and his Widowmaker play. But during the course of the week, they actually decided, Kefri, you're, you're not the one for us. And now uh, this week we'll be seeing a different player named Waz. Uh, we did see him at yesterday yeah. as well in the uh, round of eight match. So... Who knows if they're going to be able to repeat that performance? Yeah, and can you can can you remember the specifics? Was there an, an underperformance from TSM, or was it just Liquid playing well? I can't remember where we landed on in that discussion. John, do, do you do you, can you cast your mind back that far? We've seen a lot of Overwatch. It in has the last been three a weeks. lot. 
And I think uh, I, I think it was a combination of TSM maybe being a little bit off and Kefri being particularly good. On, I yeah, would say. Okay. Um, so it was a little little bit from column A, a little bit from column B, really. But it it, it sort of came together for Liquid in the end. Mm. Now TSM we described as the as the favourites in that matchup last time we introduced them. Does the same still stand now, John? On your you know you've you've witnessed Liquid thrive previously in a best oh, of three. I mean, now, I know this is a tough debate. Yes, because in a bracket where Envious has already moved on and we have yeah. Cloud9, of course, already qualifying for the playoffs, it actually becomes a really heated battle. I believe Joshi put up a poll earlier on. I think Fnatic are currently mm -hmm. leading that poll. We haven't spoken about them so far. TSM, Team Liquid, uh, it's, it's difficult on paper. Even though week on week things are changing, you could argue that TSM might have a slim lead on paper. But again, if Waz somehow produces a step change compared to Kefri as well, yeah. then we may well see Liquid comfortably win here. Who knows? Yeah, we'll be talking about uh, this kind of this Kefri new edition stand-in uh, discussion a little further after we do address the maps. And, oh, never mind, it is the most default thing you're ever going to see. <laughs> it's Hollywood, Gibraltar, and Dorado. G G Gibraltar has been cropping up a little more mm -hmm. uh, this last week. I mean, I don't think we saw it any, like, at any point during the first week of uh, first weekend of play, or at least very little of it. I can't make sweeping statements like that mm -hmm. uh, without covering my ass. But, yeah, Gibraltar's back in alongside Dorado and Hollywood. Now, what I wanted to ask you about was this this Kefri Waz discussion. So, is is it the flex role that's been filled in? Or? Well, Kefri was playing only DPS. It was okay. you know Reaper mm -hmm. here, Widowmaker there. I don't recall seeing him on any tanks or anything. So, like a very that. influential and role to be yeah actually filling in. Yeah, it's a big it's a big um, you know spot to fill. If uh, Waz has been over you know outperforming mm -hmm. Kefri, it makes sense to to run with him here. Basically, your DPS uh, players are going to be so pivotal in any matchup uh, as they essentially have to carry you. The tanks and supports, they can do their best to stay alive and provide you windows, but it's got to be the DPS players. They really have to know how to capitalize on every possible advantage. Yeah, and I do think it's interesting to kind of... Uh, I, I mean, I don't know the answer to this, and I'm, I mean, you may very well not as well. You have to be perhaps competing at that level to have the answers. But, you know, the idea of, like being flexible, being able to play a bit of anything. Like, do you think there's this, there's a danger of spreading yourself too thin? You know, you, you want to specialize and not, I mean, that's probably a better way to describe this, but you want to specialize and, you know, be, focus on your McCree game, focus on your Genji game, or do you think there is, there's no danger, no risk of just getting good at everything? Uh, I think definitely you want to specialize. Um, we've seen McCree and Tracer is kind of a whole role by itself, right. just because they, they do play somewhat similarly. Obviously, McCree has less survivability, no way to blink out of danger, for example, uh, similar to Tracer, but it's essentially just going to boil down to your maps. You can't play McCree everywhere all the time, even though, you know, some but, people I mean, do. subject to change, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like our tier, for example, in Europe will play McCree to a fault, perhaps. Um, but yeah. you do see those DPS players at least know McCree, Reaper, Tracer, generally. Okay, and so that's like the pool they have to have. Yeah, and Genji, of course, you want one person to really, really know how to play Genji, and you're going to spend a lot of time on that character if you are excelling at him. Okay, interesting stuff. We are almost ready to jump into this map. I'm looking forward to seeing who is going to be shining, and that's what I'm asking you guys as both here at the desk and at home. Hashtag OWOpen, who is going to be your MVP? Who do you want to see stand up and thrive in this best of three? Who are you going to be crossing your fingers and toes for? Let us know on social media. And guys, that's my question to you. Who are you going to be watching out for? One name that you want to see standing out. We always do find these MVPs. Who would you, who would you like to see rising above the ranks? I'll start with you, John. I'm going to go with Nicholas. I feel like uh, he might have a point to prove. He may have had a little bit of an off week the last time they lost to Liquid, and I want to see him uh, redeem himself and also just show us, because he is just naturally such a great curator of plays. And I just want to see if Waz can do as well as Kefri did last week. Let's find out. It's time for another fantastic best of three. North American Overwatch kicks off here for a third week. Let's get into it. All right, so we're going to be moving in onto Hollywood for the first best of three of the evening. We have got Team Liquid versus TSM, ladies and gentlemen. And as we can see here, uh, Team Liquid will be attacking first on Hollywood. That's right, and you can see Waz picking up the mantle of Genji very quickly. ID was on that Widowmaker just for a second, though. Looks like he will be swapping over to Zarya. Our blue not playing his patented Roadhog. Uh, looks like they are making a shift towards just two tanks this time around. Roadhog used to come out for Harblue no matter what, but of course Zarya is going to be a pivotal defense. Just be able to spot place bubbles on your teammates. AZK playing the uh, Reaper to get us started. Had some really great times as McCree yesterday, so uh, interesting to see him on that Reaper. But of course, attacking point A is a lot different than pushing a payload. You've got all of your defensive characters huddled up in one spot, so Reaper can come out quite often. Tort on the defense here does get the Harmony Orb so that he can go after Waz. Uh, excuse me, that's AZK that he's trying to focus down very quickly. He got very low and taken out by Harblue. 
Minstrel up in the uh, cafe already getting picked off as well, and ID looks like he is soon to fall. Uh, so TSM, excellent defense to get us started here. Exactly right, and uh, Torque basically went unchecked for the entirety of that. We were watching Trey, so no one really lifted a finger uh, to try and take him out, and he grabbed three kills to his uh, self. Uh, it means that he's got a Pulse Bomb available already, and this is going to be in time for the second engagement here. So very nice stuff from Torque. And uh, Liquid now, once again, going to be coming in for round two. Yep, they're choosing a different route this time, going through security on into the lights area, where you can see basically it's called that by some pros because there's just stage lights all inside that area. Uh, JKW here as the Reinhardt for the defense. TSM does have Earth Shatter available. So as they come running in here, I was almost expecting to see it immediately, but the Winston bubble slows him down just a second. He is going to drop that Earth Shatter and catch several members of the attacking team. Liquid, AZK going down very quickly again. They're going to be hurting without that DPS and you can see Waz just flying all over the point. Very low on health, does eventually fall there. And uh, D defense, TSM actually just hanging on. They haven't looked in trouble at all yet. They only lost one person during the first push, and this time they didn't lose anyone. And like you said, Joshy, we're looking for those big plays coming out from the DPS players. We haven't really seen anything of the sort yet coming out from AZK or Waz. Now, of course, the spawn is quite close by. There is still plenty of time for Liquid to be able to produce a play like that, but they do have to rely on these guys a fair bit. I mean, ID and Meza, you can see with ultimates available, they'll be able to set it up, but we need the corresponding knocking them down. Yeah, we should have a sound barrier available from both sides as well. Let's see. The Graviton Surge initiating here catches several members. A couple of members manage to slide out of there, but Sound Barrier goes off on both sides. No one falling just yet, but it is going to be the defense losing their tank right away. Nicholas on the Reaper is going to fall. No Reapers on either side left standing. Torque is still basically unhandled right oh, now. He's man. just jumping in on whoever he feels like, and finding that Zen kill is definitely going to help out the defense. Mitchell getting extremely low now gets finished off as well, and Torque is the star of the defense right now after losing a lot of his teammates. No, he does fall to the Winston with only a sliver of health left. AZK managed to respawn during that entire fight, run all the way back to the point, and help clean up. So they have secured a tick, but I don't expect them to actually capture the entire thing right here. I was about to say, the moment uh, we, we need to basically see Torque handled here. Hang on a second. Wire is going to come in to try and seal the deal now for Team Liquid. Manages to get a kill. Looking for Zenyatta. Oh, it doesn't even matter to hang an ID actually picking up for him. Joe Meister will finally go down, and Team Liquid will now win that team fight decisively. I was saying, Torque went completely unchecked, and the moment Meza actually looked at him and went, oh yeah, there's a tracer here. <laughs> Torque went down like a sack of potatoes, yeah. but really, Liquid could have done that much sooner. Uh, at least they did in the end, though, and they are going to be making on to point number two. Yeah, about three minutes burned off already. It's going to be a kind of a slow point A take. Hollywood traditionally does, you know, go the way of the attacker on point A almost every single time. It's very difficult to get that full hold, but that's a lot of time already used up for Liquid on the attack. You can see them already in position here to prevent the defense from setting up on that high ground, which you see time and time again, just to reiterate, defense is like taking that high ground because basically there's less of them visible to get hit yep. from the low ground. They have full shots down at the people pushing the payload. They can jump down at any time that they choose. They can pick their fights. And JKW is going to leap down as uh, Liquid is actually very spread out here. You can see members as JKW is kind of spinning around. We can see the silhouettes all over the place. AZK going to fall once again. Losing ID as well is going to slow down their push. But we, ha we have casualties on both sides. Liquid may actually get the better of this. That Graviton Surge picks up a couple of members and it does stop Winston from leaping around and slapping everyone away, but Harblue is on his own right now, trying to power down Waz on Genji. Does get the kill with that very high-powered Zarya. That is a danger even in pro play. Feeding the Zarya will result in your Genji's death very often. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Once you get uh, once you get between 50 and 100 charge on that, never mind. One second, that is a big Earth Shatter trying to get one better now on Liquid. We see Torque moving on in. TSM looking for that opening, but Liquid getting the first two kills here, and ID following up with a third and fourth. ID absolutely carrying a Zarya in this position, still with about 70 to 80 charge at the beginning of that engagement, and showing absolutely no signs of slowing down. I think that illustrates the point perfectly. Yeah, on both sides, Hard Blue and ID, Zarya have been very monstrous during the second phase, but Liquid getting the upper hand there. Both sound barriers were used and burned off very quickly at the beginning of that engagement. Waz still has Dragon Blade available if things get messy. Nicholas pops his Death Blossom and doesn't actually get anything for his uh, troubles there. Harblue takes out the hang, but the offense still rolling here. Mezer gets the kill on Joe Meister, JKW, Harblue all down right now, and of course Zenyatta not going to last long on his own. They are going to hit this checkpoint very rapidly in comparison to point A. And that's actually really good news for Liquid. They need 
needed that because point A, frankly, was quite a long time for them to be held off. So they needed some compensation to that to continue to set what they will deem to be the most competitive time possible. And now we see uh, the teams resetting, getting ready for another big engagement. Just a little bit of poking at the moment, nothing super serious as Liquid fall back towards the payload to go around this dog leg. Defense was looking so good on point A and Torque was a big part of that, but since then it's been a story of these Zaharias. Graviton Surges have essentially determined the winner of the last couple of fights here. Waz with that Dragon Blade available could go off any time. Torque does toss the Pulse Bomb in, doesn't get a direct kill, but several eliminations going the way of the defense. Liquid needs to back up. You can see AZK trying to get out of there with the Harmony Orb and the Wraithwalk. Not going to last long though. to hang trying to fall back to that full heal. They're just going to let him get back because that's essentially the same as a kill. Uh, could build your ult a little bit, but you don't want to get picked out just overextending. So defense looking good now. They are going to actually fall back some. They don't want to provide any direct sight lines to these attackers as they return. Exactly right. And uh, they have to be just a little bit careful. TSM looking for those sight lines, looking for that pick they can make to give them an excuse to dive in initially. Torque trying to poke and prod, looking for an opportunity, but Zarya Bubbles actually combined with Reinhardt Shield, just very difficult for them to provide a target. And uh, Torque not able to do it on this occasion, looking for Waz, trying to pick off Genji before the start of the engagement. That would be perfect. And we have a huge collapse here coming in from Team Liquid. Three kills to start things off. AZK absolutely going to town. I believe that was with Death Blossom as well. And that's a three to one to start off, but the rest of TSM going down in the meantime. And this payload is going all the way to the finish. This is pretty scary here. There should be an opportunity to contest. We'll see Winston actually keeping Reinhardt pinned into his spawn, but it's Joe Meister who's kind of uh, alive and trying to contest the point. Earthshatter comes up from the defense as they finally get back to it. Harblue uh, with that Diva is going to try and delay as long as he can. Shake has actually swapped over to the May rather than the uh, second healer. This is the first time we haven't had a Zenyatta on defense, maybe ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, certainly been quite a while. All six of them are dead, though. Joe Meister won't be able to get up quickly enough. And after the very, very late first point, frankly, coming out from Team Liquid here, I think they uh, handled the rest of the map very, very well indeed, Josh. Yeah, only a minute and a half remaining there at the end. It's going to be a time of about uh, five and a half minutes, unless I'm mistaken. It could be six and a half minutes. It did seem uh, point A did take a, quite a long time. It so did, I, think, yeah. I think it is six and a half. But either way, Twerk, you can see some of his tracer plays that we were uh, you know, praising here on point A. Eventually, uh, everything from Liquid here did go down. But it took a Death Blossom there from AZK and a Dragon Blade and another ultimate, if I'm not mistaken, just to be able to take A in the end. They used essentially everything across the board to make sure that they didn't just get full held. And in the, the middle there, you can see a very, very nice uh, play coming out there from Team Liquid. AZK really making his presence known. And towards the final push as well, TSM having a little bit of difficulty once they got out the door. Uh, but they were able to regroup. Unfortunately, only long enough for this to happen. Now, this was absolutely insane. Triple kill to start things off en route to a team wipe for Team Liquid, and that will, of course, allow them to complete the map. So, the question now is whether the time can Seven be matched. <laughs> 7.29 to beat. Yeah, I forgot uh, this payload map is actually nine minutes and not eight, <laughs> but seven and a half minutes is definitely beatable. TSM uh, had a respectable defense point A. If they can manage to take that faster, I think that's going to go a long way toward trying to complete the map. Now on defense here, we see Liquid setting up with just the very, very standard stuff that you always see. It's the uh, Lucio Zen combo. Reinhardt Zarya just to be able to provide barriers and right. Reaper McCree just to dish out a ton of damage on this small space. That's really where they excel. Anytime someone has to attack into a confined area, it makes sense to have the Reaper there just to uh, blast in on whatever happens to come in there. And he is the tank buster. You can see two tanks, very actually a mirror coming across here for TSM's attacking squad. Yeah, so no quick uh, Winstons coming in from TSM. We are going to be playing with the Reinhardt and the Zarya. Uh, hard blue on Zarya, of course, always a joy to watch, but I have to say... I miss uh, his Rodon, right? I mean, I, I, I do love his Roadhog as well, but I, I, I do quite enjoy his Zarya too. One thing I would say, though, is that if we're talking about Zarya, ID definitely stole the show in the first half of that map. Yeah, I think each of them had a Graviton Surge or two that worked out well for them, but ID did get that uh, monstrous kill yeah. during the second phase to allow them to dislodge the cart. We've got seven minutes remaining now. Nothing really has happened yet. Just poking across, trying to build up those ultimates. You can see AZK actually up to 40% already, well ahead of Torque on the offense. They are positioning themselves up on the balcony. I'm not sure if they're just going to drop down immediately onto the point. It can be rough as Mezzer is just staring them down, waiting 
for that juicy charge. There's no flank from Liquid at the moment, so uh, TSM aren't too worried about someone sneaking up behind them on the balcony. And here comes the collapse. Are we going to be able to get the point on the first go? This would be a major blow to Team Liquid if TSM were able to do it. Both teams trading kills. Waz and ID once again. ID with the double kill, and he is just not stopping here at all. Getting a third on JKW as well, and Liquid are absolutely Ooh. going to clean up TSM. Torque yeah. nearly gets out of there, but a well-placed shot from Waz. Oh, Reaper oh, does oh, finish oh, him oh, off. Zarya to get a little bit of damage then in there as well. And ID and Mezer on the defense. Both tanks have their ults available for the next engagement. Things not looking good for TSM so far. Already a minute and a half burned off. We were saying if they manage to take A a bit faster, that could be a huge boon to them. But this is not working out so far. Joe Meister and the tanks up in the front line. There's a Graviton search from ID. Catches a couple of members. The Urshad follow-up actually ensures the kills on JKW and Nicholas. They won't have any CC ults for the next push, but that is definitely going to... Oh, actually, no, it was Mezer. Mezer didn't use his Urshatter. I'm not really sure what happened there. Someone looked like they fell flat on their back, but doesn't really matter. Liquid happy to have the kills, and TSM is going to be forced to regroup. Yeah, that, that Graviton Surge just played crowd control there on team. That uh, was probably a charge, a charging Reinhardt into a charging Reinhardt that uh, ended up knocking back. Yeah, and then you managed to get the second one in there as well. Exactly right. So uh, Torque going to be starting things off here with a kick up onto AZK. That is a good start for TSM, but they need to do a little bit more than that. Urshatter coming down now, and Torque absolutely flat on his back. Nicholas now trying to come in with a few extra kills and with AZK wow. down it might be a little bit easier to do that and still nobody dead on the side of TSM. Liquid now losing Meza as well and they are at the moment in struggle bear mode. Props to ID again for just staying alive throughout this fight. Does his best there at the end. Of course he was all alone minstrel on the opposite side there and in the cafe AZK will go down as well. So TSM and Liquid actually set very similar times there on point A. Four and a half minutes oh, excuse me almost five minutes available means TSM could be uh, looking Looking good here for the street space. It's Harblue's already up on the rooftops. Nicholas just teleported up there, of course. Got Death Blossom available. He's not going to let Reinhardt take that lift. He knows that half the cast can't even get up on this rooftop without the help of it. Exactly. And this is what's so oh, important. Did right? Harblue oh. just fall on per I think he just fell accidentally. I think he did. And un unfortunately, that what did not end nicely at all. You didn't well. catch on camera, guys. <laughs> but don't worry. It probably wasn't safe for television. Ouchie. And that is a very quick lel coming out yeah. from Harblue as well. He knew that that wasn't part of oh. the script. And now we have Team Liquid collapsing in onto TSM. Graviton Surge coming out now for them as well. Trying to get those picks off. Not able to do so at the moment. Nicholas, JKW, and Harblue all have ultimates available on the side of TSM. And Joe Meister getting very low there, but managing to stay alive on Lucia. You very rarely see large mistakes like that. And that's it was definitely lel worthy. But uh, here we go. Graviton Surge here uh, from the attacking team does get a lot of credit oh, for them to hang ID and Waz do scoop up some kills on the defense though and Waz going to finish off Shake there. It is just the lone Zarya at this point going to get melted down by Waz as well. So uh, Waz pulling his weight. <laughs> at, at, at the moment we have, uh, I, I want to say Dahang, ID and Waz just working as a rather disgusting DPS trio right now because those Discord orbs from Dahang have just been allowing ID to more or less melt face wherever Zarya decides to walk. It's been incredible and Team Liquid's oh. coordination there has been so good. Here comes Waz, he's looking for the Death Blossom here and he's about to get them. He gets up too. No, that's Nicholas. Nicholas. Pardon me. They I both thought used that was it. Waz they coming down the roof. They did both use it. Yep. And uh, Nicholas actually did come up out on <laughs> Top is the transcendence that made the big difference because both Death Blossoms were active, but you can see TSM actually uh, getting the benefit from it a little bit more than Liquid as uh, transcendence basically negated Waz. And as Zenyatta falls as well, that is enough of a staggered death that I'm not sure that Team Liquid can try to contest this at all. They may just want to start to set up, but Reinhardt being very close to the cart could charge in. There's a sound barrier just to help out TSM and try and finish this checkpoint. JKW is there and he's got some extra health and he is just going to be working it as uh, Tracer tries to get in there. Dehang is not going to last long. He's probably going to swap again off of the Tracer uh, as it was pretty much a last, you know, last ditch attempt to try and keep that card from hitting the checkpoint. But now that TSM has, those doors are going to open. Two and a half minutes to go. Exactly right. And this is uh, this is comfortably enough time for them to finish the last point here. But if you get two or three really big team wipes and you can build up ultimate advantage on the defensive team, it can suddenly become very, very difficult for offense to set a time at all here. So momentum is going to be the key for TSM. JKW now moving around the edge. You can see the Team Liquid are positioning themselves on the balcony, looking for an opportunity to pump down 
They're actually going to do that rather early on. I saw Waz coming down, but then moving back a little bit. Graviton Surge coming down there as well. Meza getting an early pick. And uh, is that Lucio? Yes, it is Lucio with the Discord Orb. Oh. Actually, a little bit isolated there, but that doesn't even matter. Three kills from Liquid. AZK picking up two of them. Yeah, in this last stretch, they're basically like, okay, McCree, it's time. Let's get, let's put that. Uh, you know, whatever character you were on, let's get McCree going finally. Uh, and finally, he does have the high ground. He's able to just shoot down and do his, you know, McCree duty, which is just left click everyone in the head until they're all gone. Harblue does have the uh, Grepton search here available for the offense, and he catches a couple members immediately. Earthshatter comes out as well, and JKW is going to be eliminated immediately. But Mezer, um, as he returns for the defense, has an Earthshatter ready to go. Might be able to get to use it, might not, as the offense is going to push up towards these doors. There's still over a minute to go with very, very little space to go. And I should point out, by the way, that wasn't even a pulse bomb. That was actually just Tracer shooting there. Earthjetter coming out for the defense. We need to try and hold this off as long as possible. One minute left to go for Team Liquid. Three people already down to make that four with Waz. And at the moment, TSM are looking like they are going to be able to take Hollywood. That is basically a team wipe. Down goes Minstrel. And there goes the time with 51 seconds remaining. Very close game, to be honest. Lots of back and forth. It really just came down to, you know, individual ultimates. And here, uh, point A, again, was a very solid defense here out of the side of Liquid. Um, both teams actually, you know, surpassing expectations there on point A. But the streets phase, Hard Blue's misstep off the roof. Yeah, you have to wonder. They had such good position with both a Graviton Surge and a Death Blossom available. If Hard Blue doesn't walk off the edge into his death, Maybe that goes completely differently. TSM it did end up winning the map either way, so yeah. uh, I think they can forgive him this time, but definitely don't let that happen again, Harbu. That, no, that was scary. Not. AZK, though, uh, special mention to him maybe on the final point for uh, coming down on the balcony on McCree and actually doing a very, very good job in taking out, I think, three or four people twice, but not quite enough to stem the flow. I feel like they're... TSM, whenever they actually got down and dirty in those team fights, once Team Liquid collapsed on top of them, they were winning comfortably more than their fair share of those. It didn't look like Liquid were able to cohesively bind together at those one or two moments. It was really close, and they won a few as well, mm -hmm. but TSM just... When they wiped Team Liquid, they always had four or five alive, it seemed. Yeah, whenever TSM did win those fights, it was, of course, conjunction of ultimates. And uh, they were able to push forward and stop the defense from getting comfortable every single time. And yeah. that... Uh, the trickle in defense there as they reached the streets phase checkpoint was actually pretty brutal for Liquid to try and defend. We even saw Dehang switch off of Zen, so any ultimate that he had built up went away so that he, just so he could pop on Tracer and try to protect that cart. But uh, we are going to head to a short break now. When we come back, we will be seeing game number two between these two teams, Team Liquid and Team Solo Mid. Keep in mind, this is just a best of three. So with TSM up 1-0, Team Liquid's life is on the line. Don't go anywhere.